Okay, now we're going to talk uh, about combinations where actually order doesn't matter. So I've got the same example again. I'm going into an ice cream shop and I'm choosing three flavors out of six possible flavors. And we need to think about how many different combinations could I have. But now I'm saying that it doesn't matter if I choose chocolate, vanilla and strawberry. Those three flavors, it doesn't matter which order they come in. I'm still choosing chocolate, vanilla and strawberry if I'm choosing strawberry, vanilla and chocolate. I'm still only getting the same three, three flavors. So now we sort of have to change the example that we had last time when we're talking about combinations, because order doesn't matter here. I'm still getting three flavors the same. So if I was going to look at, and combinations, we often use the letter C instead. So I've got six possibilities of different flavors, and I'm still going to be choosing three possible combinations of these flavors. How would I work that out? Well, we know that first time around I've got six to choose between. Let's say that I took chocolate. I could combine that chocolate lots of different ways. I could combine the chocolate as it's written here, V-S-O-L-R. Or I could change it so that I started with chocolate and then just switch these two, S-V-O-L-R. Then the V could move along, chocolate, S-O-V-L-R. So there would be lots and lots of possibilities with chocolate first, and then I've got lots and lots of possibilities with vanilla first, and then with strawberry. So the first time around, I have six different ones to choose between. But then one of them is actually chosen. So the second time around that I can choose, I have five to choose between. And I've chosen another one. And then the third time around, I can choose another one. Four. So I've chosen three flavors. Let's take three flavors. Uh, and then I've stopped because I'm only allowed three ice cream. So I've chosen three flavors. The possibility of me choosing three different flavors as a permutation where order doesn't matter. We showed it in the last video. It's six times five times four. First time around, we've got six choices we can make. Second time around, we've got five choices we can make. Last time around, we've only got four choices we can make. If we were going to have six different uh, scoops of ice cream, we'd have six times five times four times three times two times one. It would be an enormously high ice cream with lots more combinations, but we don't have place for more than three scoops of ice cream, so we stop after the third number here, six times five times four. But let's think, let's say that we choose um, orange, lemon, and raspberry as my three combinations. And inside of this number are all the different possibilities where orange, lemon, and raspberry come in a different order. So instead of orange, lemon, raspberry, I could also have orange, raspberry, and lemon. I could also have lemon, raspberry, and orange, or lemon, orange, and raspberry. Where I've got here, I've got the O's first, and I just swap these two around. Here I've got the L's first, and I just swap these two around. Let's have the R's first, so I could have uh, raspberry, orange, lemon, or raspberry, lemon, orange. So we can see that in our calculation here with 6 times 5 times 4, we've actually got six possibilities that these are identical. These all have the three flavors, orange, lemon, raspberry, orange, raspberry, lemon, lemon, raspberry, orange, lemon, orange, raspberry, raspberry, orange, lemon, and raspberry, lemon, orange. So when it comes to the fact that order doesn't matter, because I still have these three flavors, I have to divide by a number here. What do I divide by? Well, in maths terms, the one that we divide by, we actually divide by this number. We start at three, and then go down. Three times two times one. Three times two times one would be three times two, which is six, and six times one. So it would give us these six combinations here. The six ones where everything is double. And of course that will happen for all the different combinations, because I could have chosen chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, or vanilla, strawberry, orange, and they would all have been different. So in, if I'm going to work out combinations where order doesn't matter, I multiply the number of possibilities I have, 6 times 5 times 4, I only have 3 scoops, so I stop here at 3. 
divided by the number of scoops I had uh, and take the factorial of that. So I start at 3 and multiply by 2 and 1. So when it comes to combinations, we take the number of possibilities, 6 times 5 times 4, divided by the factorial, 3 times 2 times 1, of the number of uh, scoops we were having. So what would this end up being? Well, 3 times 2 is 6, and I have a 6 up here. So I would have 20 possible combinations. Compared with, so combinations would be 20. Compared with what we had as permutations, which if you remember from the last video, that was 120. Look at the connection here between the combinations, which is 20, and the permutations that was 120. There's a factor of 6 difference there times 6, which would be exactly in relation to our finding, because we noticed that every three flavours we had, there were six possible ways of writing it that actually made the same thing. Here we have orange, lemon and raspberry as our flavours. So this relationship between combinations and permutations is what we identified when we looked at the pattern. So this is a mathematical way of representing combinations and we can write it as being 6 factorial divided by, if we remember for permutations we had 3 factorial, uh, sorry, 6 minus 3 factorial and now, for a, because it's a combination instead of a permutation, this factorial term has to be in again. So what we get here is that for combinations of 6 and 3, we would have 6 factorial divided by 6 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial, which is just 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, divided by... 3 times 2 times 1. These ones cancel straight away. But then 6 minus 3 is another 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1. So when we put the numbers in here, we get the, uh, the answer that we would expect. 6, 3 times 2 is 6, cancels with the 6 up here, and we get 5 times 4 is 20. But you don't really need to remember these formulas. You need to remember instead that you take 6 times 5 times 4, up to the number of solutions that you have. You're only allowed three scoops of ice cream, so you only have three numbers from the six possibilities going down. Six times five times four. And you divide it by the number of uh, scoops that you were having. Three times two times one. And that's a good way of seeing and understanding the difference, I think, between combinations where the order doesn't matter and permutations where the order does matter.